Hey, y'all. Hi. Hi. It's been a while for all of us. It's been a while for me. It's been a while for you because I haven't been able to post as regularly as I usually do over the past couple of weeks. And that is due to some unexpected things happening. I'm actually going to talk a little bit about it in this video, just kind of get you caught up. I am just going to be trying new makeup. I actually have a bunch of outstanding videos. I mean, I hope the videos will be outstanding, but I mean, they are videos that are overdue, things that I need to do. Reviews, particularly the Issa Maya makeup, the Pat McGrath palette, the things that Joe got me to review. There's this bottleneck of videos, all these things I need to do. And I just need to start with something less intimidating and official than that. I need to just get back in the swing of things because I haven't been here in front of the camera in a long time. So I guess what we're doing is like an old school chit chat, get ready with me kind of, but trying new makeup. So I have just picked out things that have come my way for testing that I haven't gotten a chance to really talk about on camera yet. Some things I haven't even gotten a chance to use yet. I'm going to try to put on some kind of cohesive makeup look. If for some reason you've like clicked on this video and you've never watched me before, if this is your first time watching me, my name is Hannah and I mostly make beauty content. I'm also branching out into some fashion content. Some of it's a little bit more polished and snappy and some of it is a little bit more laid back and personal like this. No matter what I'm doing, I try not to promote overspending. I'm all about a healthy love of beauty. And if that sounds good, I hope you'll subscribe. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. I didn't have any new base products to test, so I'm already wearing some, a little bit of the Kosas foundation, love it so much. I mixed it with a little bit of the Exa green color corrector, love it so much, and I have brows on. So I dyed my brows just a couple of days ago, and I used a little bit of the Refi brow gel and a tiny bit of the Glossy brow flick, and the rest is going to be new, starting, I think, dare I try this thing that Kosas, no, not Kosas, Kaja sent to me. It's it's like an eyeliner stamp. I have never tried anything like this before. I feel like when we say we're trying new makeup, this is what we're talking about, right? So there are two kits, the original length and the long length. I think I want the original length. I've been doing some reading about winged eyeliner on hooded eyes, and there are a couple of different theories, but the one that I'm currently kind of pursuing is the theory that says you shouldn't even try to put the wing anywhere close to your actual lid, but just have it like come from the corner out. Let me start with the original, and maybe then I can put the long one on top of it if I feel like it needs to be longer. Of course, I'm saying this with like, Joe was having lunch upstairs and right before he left, he was like, I'm going to be really quiet. And he's being really loud, like scraping the chair across the floor, banging the silverware drawer open and closed. It's fine. Of course, I'm blithely talking about what I'm going to do as if this is going to be successful. I feel like this is kind of a recipe for disaster. Oh my gosh. So there's a right, there's a right side and a left side, like one side is for the right eye and the other side's for the left eye. Should I read instructions? For a perfect wing in seconds, position the wings, the wing-shaped stamp at the outer edge of the eye and press down firmly. The wing should connect to the lower lash line, creating one continuous line. Step two, line. Use the eyeliner pen to draw along the lashes and connect the wing. Step three, repeat on the other side. It says shake well. Oh, that must mean the, line, the liner, shake well. Uh, I'm gonna zoom you in. Of course, we need to be zoomed in for this. Here is what the stamp looks like. And I think it wants me to align like the swooping part, the bottom edge of the swoop that comes up with the, my lower lash line. I'm just going to eyeball it. Press firmly. It kind of worked. I mean, I am gonna end up drawing on my lid to connect it, not the hooded eye method, but it could still work. Oh, I'm, I can't believe it worked. I mean, I hope I'm not speaking too soon. Let's try the other side. How can I make sure the angle's the same? Oh, I can't make sure the angle's the same. That's the answer. The angle's not the same at all. That angle's not the same either, but maybe it's because my eyes are not the same as each other. Okay, that, the angle's the same. They don't look quite the same, but my eyelids are not the same as each other and my eyes are hooded, so it's always a little bit, you know, 
a little bit of avant-garde. I'm gonna fill it in with eyeliner and see what we've got. Okay, here's what I ended up with pre-mascara. Winged eyeliner empirically doesn't look the best on me. Like it's not my best makeup look just because again of my eyes, my eye shape. But I've been kind of getting into it lately because I like how it makes me feel. There's just something, it makes me feel just a little bit sleek and fierce and like I don't give a butt about anything. It's kind of like, that is not the chair noise of a man who's trying to be quiet. It's kind of like the graphic version of angry eyes for me right now. There's just something about it, especially because I haven't been doing winged eyeliner like this in a really long time. So it feels new to me. And it's like I'm seeing a slightly different and new version of myself when I look in the mirror with it. Because I'm not really a winged eyeliner aficionado because I don't do it that much. I don't know how fully I can speak to the efficacy of this or the difference between this and other methods. But here's what I'll say. The liner itself self, the Kaja liner, I really, really like working with. It feels really pointy, really easy to manipulate, really inky. It's like the best one that I've used since I've gone back to trying to do this kind of thing once in a while. So A plus for that. And with stamp, I feel like it might take some practice to get the angle the same every time. But with practice, I could see it becoming easier than just drawing on the line. So I feel like maybe at the beginning, it's not as easy as a familiar method. Like there's a learning curve, but then I anticipate that once I've used it a couple more times and I get used to positioning the stamp, it'll make it much quicker and easier to get like a, a filled in wing on both sides. And the thing that it does is that it makes sure that the overall shape of the wing is the same on both sides. The angle you still have to practice to get it right, but the overall shape is going to be the same because of the stamp. I like it. I'm surprised that I like it. I don't think I'm going to use any more eye makeup today except for some mascara. And I am preparing a full review of the products from Isamaya. This is the only new mascara that I'm currently testing right now. So far, I really like it, but I'm not going to go in depth about this right now because, again, that review is coming. But I am going to apply a ton of it to my lashes to complete this look. And then I'll tell you what's been happening in my life. I realized that I launched right into the makeup without addressing any of that stuff. It's not that exciting. <laughs> it's just, and it's not that complicated, but it has been very inconvenient. Okay, we're stopping. We're stopping. I didn't do the absolute grungy most with the mascara, like the most that's possible. I went like halfway there, I would say. Rather than keeping building and building it, I kind of used the brush to comb it out and make it a little fluffier and then stopped. But I did get some of it smudged onto my lower lash line on one side just because it got smudged, started cleaning it up. Up, and then I was like smudging mascara along the lower lash line, kind of like an eyeliner. And so I cleaned it up a little bit, but I left the smudge there. I got it so that it wasn't like super uneven, but it looks like my eye is a little bit lined. And then I repeated that on the other side. So I didn't add eyeliner, but I kind of used the mascara to create a little bit of definition on the lower lash line. I'm going to leave it there for the eye look. The next step is to figure out which of these many bronzers I'm I'm going to use. And I'm realizing that because I'm really focused on the task of trying new makeup, I, I promise I was going to like update you on my life and I am on track to just like proceed through the makeup without doing that. So I'll just take a break and tell you. I got sick after I went on a trip. So Joe and I prepared videos, worked around the clock to set up the channel to run without any interruption while I went to visit my friend Julia and her baby in Los Angeles. As some of you know, Joe and I lived with Julia and her husband and their baby for a year and a half during the pandemic. So we're like family. And since we've moved away, we've really missed them. It's just been a handful of months, but you know, babies grow really fast and and she's two, and I just needed to go back and visit. So I went. It was great. It was a full week, though. So we prepared the channel to function seamlessly around that trip, and we were on track to hit the ground running when I got back. As soon as I got back, I came down with uh, a very famous <laughs> virus. You might have heard of it. I am vaccinated and boosted, and uh, no one in the house got sick. So I think I might have gotten it while I was traveling on the way back or 
on the last day in LA. And then I didn't start feeling bad until the day after I got home. But get it, I did. And it lasted a really long time. It was like 10 full days that I was quarantined from Joe inside of our house because we didn't want him to get it. And I was really sick. So uh, everything ground to a screeching halt. It was bananas. I think this is the longest that I've gone without sitting in front of a camera and filming. The longest I've gone at a stretch, maybe since I started my channel, possibly with the exception of when we moved, but it might even have stretched stretched to be longer than uh, it was when we moved. So I'm feeling really like all shook up. And even though I, you know, am testing negative now, obviously, because it's been weeks, y'all. It's been like over two weeks, I think, since I got back from that trip, maybe almost three weeks. I'm still not 100%, you know, like even after I was moving around and had some of my energy back, I filmed a couple of videos last week, but you could really hear it in my voice. And it's not ideal, right? Like there are other kinds of work that I can do while being sort of most of the way recovered. But talking about makeup, filming videos, if I'm still sounding sick, you know, it's like not the best time to really get back to it and start pumping out the videos that we need to get the channel back on track. So I've been testing makeup. I've been preparing videos. I've been really putting energy into my work on Instagram because that was something that I was actually even able to do like from bed, even when I was feeling really bad. But I'm basically, hopefully, on the tail end of coming out of what, I mean, it's an illness that combined with the trip that I took ended up taking like a month-long bite out of my productivity. Really, if you look at the whole picture. Let's go ahead and look at the bronzers and then I'll pick up where I left off with talking about this when I'm applying whatever bronzer I choose to apply because I don't want to just like blabber on and on in the middle of the video. So I have a couple of options. There's the new Merit bronzer. All of this was PR, by the way. This was PR for Merit. Actually, the Isamaya mascara wasn't PR. That is something that I chose to review and that I purchased for review. So far, everything else is. This, the Kaja stamp, and this bronzing stuff from Ciate. So Ciate has come out with a bronze version of the dewy stick. It's like a bronzing highlight, kind of. They also sent me this glossy cheek tint and these bronzer drops, the Brazilian Glow Bronzing Serum, which I have played around with a little bit on my body and I really, really like it. It's got a rosy color. Mm, you can't really tell from that. This is terrible work. I don't know what I'm trying to accomplish with this, but <laughs> maybe you can see. Is there a way that I can layer? I'll put a little bit of it on my cheek. I really like it and I want you guys to see. What I'll say is that color-wise, I really like the dewy stick because it too has that rosy undertone, but I haven't gotten along as well with it because it stays dewy. And the dewy bronze glossy cheek tint in the little tube is a little bit more cool toned in my experience. It doesn't really have that rosy, or it, it's a little more um, cool toned and a little more orange. You can really see the difference there, right? That's the Ciate Dewy bronze dewy stick. It's like rosy. And then the dewy tint in the tube is much more like a classic orangey bronze. So I have tested them a little bit and I don't like either of them as much as I like the drops. And the Merit bronzer, I tried yesterday, but I don't really have fully formed opinion opinions on it yet. It does look like it might lean a little orange. I thought it was beautiful on my cheeks because it's got this like sheer buildability. I'm going to swatch it next to the House Labs bronzer, which is a really beautiful, super neutral bronzer that's neither rosy nor orange. So the Merit one is darker, but it can be sheared out. But even when it's sheared out, it's more orange than the, the lightest shade of the Lady Gaga bronzer. I feel like the Merit bronzer, I'm going to put a little bit of it on. I'm going to layer the Merit bronzer over the Ciate bronzing, what are they called? Brazilian Glow Bronzing Serum. Because I feel like the Merit bronzer, it's nice for that kind of sunset flush look. Yesterday I was wearing a full blush cheek and adding the bronzer was really nice, but I like to wear bronzer like as a blush sort of on its own. And I don't think it's gonna work for me for that. I think it's gonna be too orange for that. I'm shaking this up. I'm going to put some drops, drops on my cheek and blend it out with the Sigma X Samantha Concealer Blend Brush. I really love Samantha's brushes that she made with Sigma, but I always use them for things that aren't what they're designed for. And I'm gonna tell you about my feelings at the same time, what we call multitasking. So things are gonna get back on track with the channel, right? It's happening, it's happening now, it's happening as we speak. And in fact, it's happening because we <laughs> because we speak. But um, you know, it's not just that. It's weird to lose that much time. It's weird to 
be that sick. It's weird to be quarantined from one's own husband. It's weird to have participated in this way with in what's happening globally and what has been happening for these several years. It's like this specter, you know what I mean? Getting sick has been this specter. It t- I feel like it takes some processing on like a couple of levels. And one of those levels, the really obvious one, is just getting my life back together. And then there's like deeper stuff going on too, you know? It's like dealing with all of the the feelings and fears and processing the experience, you know? I think that's true not just for me, but for my entire household. I mean, maybe Sadie doesn't really understand. She's just glad that she's allowed to, to snuggle with me again. But it's just been a weird time over here. We've been going through it. We've been going through the gigs. I just think that that looks like a really natural bronze. You know, it has some hints of that orangey quality that some bronzers have, but it's balanced and it's really rosy. The sheen is beautiful. It's become one with the skin. I'm just really impressed by this stuff from Ciate. It works on the face. It's really beautiful, like on the shoulders. And I'll try to remember to show that to you at some point. Let's add the merit just on the outsides because I don't want that orangey undertone to get into. I think I want it to stay on the side of my face. I also think too, like quite a long convalescence at, at, at any time of life and for any reason can give a person a chance to sort of reassess. And I had the added benefit when it comes to immobility of having just taken a week off. That was planned. So I had planned a week off of work and then I had a forced basically 10 days of unproductivity, inactivity. It's not just like the longest break I've taken from filming. It's like the longest break that I've taken from working in my life. Like, can I say that? In my actual life, like 20 23 or 24 days of just of actually not applying myself to the tasks of my life, which range from producing content for my job job, you know, this through to the other kind of work, like writing work that I do, gigging work that I do on the side. I, I emailed everyone and I was like, I can't, I can't do anything right now. I can't do this. I, I'm going, I'm not gonna be able to complete this task. Like everything just got cleared off the table because I couldn't do anything. It really gave me a chance to reassess my relationship with productivity and and my relationship with work and my priorities. And I really, uh, you know, need that as part of my adult life. And I've been trying to get myself there, but it's hard to take a good hard look at one's emotional relationship with productivity and like the way that we tie our self-worth to certain kinds of productivity and to sort of untangle those ties and unpack that. It's hard to do that when you're in the middle of obsessively working really hard all the time, you know? So there has been some sort of fallout in my inner life from this forced long break. And I've been trying to kind of pay attention to the way that that's acting on me as I pick things back up again. So strange life events affecting both the inner and the outer self. And what I think turned out to be kind of a pretty cheek look. It's like bright and glowy, but it's working. I'm going to clean up a little bit. You know, I didn't actually even bring any concealer down here. I'm going to use this ColourPop powder just to clean up a little bit under here. Actually, I feel like it's sneaking in a little too much. There, that kind of toned down the cheek look in the way that I wanted, sort of put it back in its place, pushed pushed the cheek to the outer edge of the eyes. That shininess had kind of like crept in. Maybe it's not looking too patchy on this side. I feel like it's not looking patchy in real life, but on camera it's looking a little bit. I know what else I was going to tell you in this life check-in. I have produce some videos with the financial diet. And my Patreon patrons already know this because I've been talking about it on Patreon and actually processed some of like my my thoughts about how the videos should be structured on Patreon in a video and got amazing feedback from my patrons. So thank you so much to my Patreon patrons for helping with that. The whole process is really delightful. I went up to the financial diet. The financial diet, I mean, I think you all know what it is. It's another YouTube channel. A couple of months ago, I gave an interview with Chelsea who is at like the face of the financial diet. And they asked me after I gave that interview, which I will link down below, to come back and basically 
basically do a channel takeover for a month. So for the next four weeks, by the time you see this, it might be the next three weeks, like this week and two more weeks. I have a video going up on the financial diet every week. That's just like my content, but I filmed it in their studio and in like the style of their videos. So it's a collaboration basically, and it's really exciting. It's one of the things that we've been working on behind the scenes. As I filmed this, the first one just went live, I think yesterday. So that has been exciting. And I think that some of you who are watching this video, who are watching my channel now, found me through the financial diet, which is really exciting. So thank you for coming and subscribing. I hope I'm living up to your expectations. I'm over here like just applying makeup and talking about the fact that I was sick for a month. It's fine. This is one of the things that Joe got for me to review while I was on No Buy July. Joe picked these Patrick Ta Precision Lip Crayons, and I have used them a little bit. They're interesting. The claim to fame, I think, is this sort of chiseled edge, this chiseled shape. This shade is called She's Not From Here, and it's a bright red, which I'm hoping will go well with Merit Cabo, which I haven't gotten to wear yet, and I'm really excited because I just filmed that Merit Swatch video. That's like one of the only things that I've been able to do. When I swatched Cabo, I was like, oh, I'm gonna put that on my lips. And it looks like this will be a good match for it. It's just a little bit dry. So it's very pigment forward, which I think is good. And the chiseled shape is definitely versatile and makes it easy to fill in the lips and gives you a bunch of different edges with which to work to get the shape. Let me use it and report back like in real time. Yeah, it's interesting. It, it's very, <laughs> kind of look like I have a mustache, but on my lip. It's like drawing a line with a pressed pigment stick. It's really pigmented and it's dry. It's not creamy. And I kind of like that, actually. I feel like I'm just applying almost like stain, pigment stain directly to the part of my lips that I want to overline. Actually, yeah, I'm kind of impressed by the formula and the uh, process, like the, the way that it's working to use it, the way the angles of the chisel tip are working, the way it's applying. I haven't been that impressed by the colors. That's why I haven't used it that much. And this is a pinker red than I was hoping it would be. I mean, it's not a pink red, but I was hoping it would be more orange than it is. But I think if I had this in a color that I really love, like uh, like a pale milk chocolate or a super neutral brown leaning mauve, then I would use it a lot. Yeah, I feel like that the feeling of it being sort of a pressed pigment has made it easy to get the soft blurred line that I like when I line my lips. I like that. I'm actually more impressed than I thought I would be. Let's put Cabo on top of it. What a color. So yeah, Cabo is more orange. It's more that brilliant cinnabar orange red. And she's not from here, it's a little bit pinker, but they're they're close enough, you know what I mean? Like it works as a lip liner for Cabo. That's a really strong application of the Merit lipstick. And I think it's made even more pigmented and dense looking because of the lip liner underneath it. I'm gonna blur and blot a little and see what we can get. Okay, so that's blotted down a little bit. That's more how I tend to wear the Merit lipsticks, uh, but it's still a really strong look. And I think that usually I apply the Merit lipsticks without a lip liner, and I usually I apply less of the lipstick, and it's like less of a punch. Because I had lined my lips and I was going for kind of this bold look, I ended up leaving like a little heavier of an application on than I usually use but it's definitely working. Well, this is fun. I tried new makeup and it kind of worked out and got you guys updated on why there was such a long gap in videos. We basically missed a week of posting and then the, the week after that, just one or two, maybe two videos went up. That's right now. So I'm hoping that the other video will go up before the end of the week. It's just like a slow crawl back to normalcy in every way. This is a good first step though. It feels good to be here talking with you, you know, putting on makeup in my little space, my cozy little space here. I think I am going to keep going and film a new makeup hot takes. And actually that will probably have already gone up. Thank you so much for watching this video. Obviously, I'll link everything. Should I do a quick recap? The eyeliner stamp, I kind of like it. Kind of a success. The Issa Maya mascara, I like it, but stay tuned for the full review. The Ciate bronzing drops, I am surprised by how much I like them. The Merit bronzer, I really love the creamy texture and the sheer finish, but the lightest shade is a little bit orange for my tastes. I was very impressed by the Patrick Ta lip liner, except not the three colors that I have. And 
I mean, Merit Cabo instant classic. If you'd like to be subscribed and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then I hope that you'll take a moment and subscribe now before the video ends. Uh, but more than that, you know, I really hope that you are taking extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 